Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now, here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Welcome to the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Bagley, and wow, are we going to have a powerful program today. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead did more than just bring the Messiah from the grave. He ascended to heaven, but he made a promise. And uh, he said that I must go away, for if I go not away, the comforter cannot come. But he said, if I go away, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And so the Lord is coming, the coming of the Lord. No question about it. The world is waiting for it, anticipating it. And in these last days, there's going to be an attack by Satan himself, literally through the Antichrist, through the false prophet, through the beast system, to try to deceive the masses of people and to turn them away from the faith and the belief that Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, is returning. When we come back, we're going to talk about the coming of the Lord. A brand new DVD, Rapture Ready. Finally, we're going to answer the question. Millions of people want to know, what is the rapture? When is the rapture? And am I ready for the rapture? Well, this brand new DVD is filled with information, scripture, a PowerPoint presentation that will help you prepare to be rapture ready. We're living in those days. Are you ready to meet the Lord? Get this DVD now at my website. All right, all right, the coming of the Lord. I mean, really think about it. I mean, for many years, that's all you ever heard about was the second coming of Christ. And uh, to some degree, it should not be a problem. It's really the next major event in the entire biblical narrative. I mean, we waited and waited and waited for the coming Messiah, the children of Israel, you know, the, the 12 tribes of, of uh, the 12 sons of Jacob ended up uh, sold into bondage with Joseph and, and then the exodus through Moses and the 40 years in the wilderness and, and then it took uh, Joshua and Caleb to cross Jordan into Canaan. Then we had to fight with all the giants and, and King David kills the Goliath and then here we go with the kings and the prophets and everybody was focusing on the coming of the Messiah, the Savior, the Redeemer. And finally, a virgin conceived of the Holy Ghost and uh, brought forth her firstborn son. They wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger. It was the final, finally, the Messiah had come, the Savior, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Are you serious? I mean, this is an unbelievable. I mean, the angels are singing in the heavens, and the shepherds were abiding their sheep at night, and there was this tremendous uh, glory filling the sky. But also Herod caught wind that a king had been born. And just like Pharaoh of Egypt tried to slaughter the deliverer, as Pharaoh tried to kill Moses, Herod tried to kill Jesus. But the Messiah, the promised child, man's redemption through Jesus Christ had come. But he was not here long, 33 years before he went to the cross to pay the ultimate price for our sins. But before he died on the cross, the conversation of his resurrection from the dead. He began to teach it and preach on it because he needed mankind to understand that even though we're on this world a little while, I mean, the Bible says, James said, life is like a vapor on the water. It appears for a little while and vanishes away. We had to have some kind of hope of life beyond death, some kind of uh, belief that there's, another, there's more out there than just this temporal life that we live here. And even one of Jesus' closest friends, Lazarus, died, and Jesus was summoned to his bedside. And if we go to St. John chapter 11 for just a moment, we realize that Jesus deliberately delays his arrival to get to Lazarus' bedside for two extra days. And the Bible says in verse 14, so I'm in St. John 11:14. 14, then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. 
And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, which is called Didymus, unto his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. So you can see there's a need for mankind to believe in the resurrection from the dead, to believe in life after death. Actually, even in the Jewish establishment at that time, the Pharisees did believe in the resurrection, but the Sadducees, they did not. And so you can see the doubting here going on. Thomas says, well, we might as well go and go die with Lazarus, okay? Well, Jesus wasn't going to explain death. He was going to prove life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so we go on in the story. We know that they arrive there. And even Martha comes out to uh, meet Jesus. The Bible says, verse 20, Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. But I know, and even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. For the first time now, we're hearing some faith being spoken, and it's being spoken by Martha. And she's realizing that even though Lazarus is dead, and if you'd have been here, Jesus, I'm sure you would have healed him and he wouldn't have died. But even now, I'm still believing in you, that maybe there's still hope. And uh, of course, Christ says to her in verse 23, Jesus saith unto her, thy brother shall rise again. And she says, Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And here's reference to the end time, the resurrection of the dead. I mean, when the dead in Christ shall rise and time shall be no more. You know, there's scripture that tells you that every eye shall behold him and every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He's Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. He is he that was dead and alive and that forevermore. And so our hope is beyond this world, believe me. If, I, if my faith was in Jesus Christ in this world only, Paul said, I would above all men be most miserable. But our hope is beyond this world. We're looking for a better city. The Abraham said, I look for a city whose builder and maker is God in the book of Hebrews. So Jesus says, yes, he shall rise again. Martha said, well, in the last day. And then Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die, believeth thou this. Now, of course, Jesus is not referring to we'll never die physically because we do know it's already appointed unto men once to die and after this the judgment. We understand that. We're, we're born, or even the great wisdom of Solomon in the book of Ecclesiastics says there's a time to be born and there's a time to die. Even Job said there's a boundary out there we cannot pass. So uh, even Job said, man is born of woman a few days and full of troubles. He cometh forth like a flower, he's cut down, he fleeth as a shadow and continueth not. So we have to get real with the realization. And even though mankind, scientifically, they're working on growing organs now and, and synthetic organs and, and uh, all kinds of uh, robots, uh, trying different types of things in the laboratories, trying to figure out ways to prolong man's life past the allotted days of 120 years that God told Moses. But we haven't been able to get past. We cannot, we cannot get past the biblical laws of God. I mean, just like gravity, you know, what goes up must come down, right? It's a, it's a biblical law. The law of sowing and reaping. You reap what you sow, okay? You don't plant corn seed and expect to get soybeans, uh, so biblical laws are in play, and the biblical law of being born and going to die is a law we cannot break. But is there life after death? Matter of fact, there's been many uh, what's called uh, near-death experiences, and you've seen them on television, and, and I've talked to people that's even experienced this, where they've died, maybe for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 
and then they were revived. And you hear a lot of stories of they seen a light at the end of a tunnel. Some met loved ones that had went on. Some said that angels were uh, carrying them through the cosmos toward a bright city. I've heard all the different stories. And obviously, there's something there uh, in that process when a, when a person starts to leave their body. And, you know, because you're a living soul, you're never going to die. Your body's going to die. We'll all physically die. Or we're going to be changed in the moment of a twinkling of an eye. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. So there's no question about this. We're going to live on somewhere. And the coming of the Lord is the, uh, uh, the, literally the climax of humanity as we know it. And Christ is going to come and change the whole thing. There's going to be a new age. Uh, seriously, a brand new era. And of course, we know in the book of Revelation, it talks about the millennial reign. Christ will reign for a thousand years upon the earth. And uh, there's no question we're going to go into another era, another age, another dimensional uh, time period. But until that time comes, we're still living in this world here. We have to believe in something beyond this veil of tears, if we, as we say. And Jesus says to uh, those that were around there, he says, take me to the grave. Take me to the grave. And uh, they begin to you know, have a struggle with that. They're saying, Lord, you know, look, he's been dead four days. Uh, by now, his body would be uh, decomposing. The smell would be there. We really don't want to roll back the stone. But Jesus says, uh, where have you laid him? And they said unto him, verse 34, where have you laid him? And they said unto him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind and have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone laid upon it. And Jesus said, take ye away the stone. And Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for it has been Dead. He's been dead four days. Uh, this is where the reality, where this is the divinity of Christ. This is where Christ shows his most powerful abilities, that he could raise a person from the dead who had been dead longer than even uh, Jewish tradition, that the spirit remains within a body for three and a half days. Jesus deliberately waited two days to get there, so that it would be four days since Lazarus had died. And that would mean he was going to supersede all of the biblical law, if you will, all of humanity's understanding. He was going to prove his divinity, that he is the, certainly the son of the living God. And I'm telling you, as he was getting ready, the first coming, he had to show all this power, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, Take authority over all principalities and powers. But the second coming of Christ is what we're now anticipating. And will it bring hope to humanity? Well, when we come back in a few moments, I'm going to share with you not only the situation with Lazarus, but what does it mean for you and me? And will you be ready for the coming of the Lord? because he's coming in a cloud soon with power and great glory. So lift up your heads, look up, for your redemption draweth nigh. I'll be right back in just a moment. A brand new DVD, Rapture Ready. Finally, we're gonna answer the question. Millions of people wanna know, what is the rapture? When is the rapture? And am I ready for the rapture? Well, this brand new DVD is filled with information, scripture, a PowerPoint presentation that will help you prepare to be rapture ready. We're living in those days. Are you ready to meet the Lord? Get this DVD now at my website. All right, all right. We're not going to leave Lazarus in the grave, I can tell you that. And Jesus certainly won't. And he won't leave you in the grave. I mean, that's the best part about it. it used to be an old song we used to sing back years ago down in the mountains. There ain't no grave going to hold my body down. Oh, I used to hear him sing that in the mountains. It would just ring, okay? Well, anyway, here's what happened. Jesus says, where have you laid him? 
And they're saying, look, Lord, we can't do this. And Jesus goes on and says, uh, take away the stone, all right? Take away the stone, verse 41. And they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And you can just feel the power of God, the resurrection of the, of the Messiah speaking, looking death dead in the eye and, and tearing away the veil of sin and the corruption that falls upon the human existence and breaking every chain of darkness as he spoke the name of Lazarus. And, and the Bible says in verse 44, and he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. His face was bound about with a napkin. So Jesus then said unto him, Loose him and let him go. I want to say this right now. There's a lot of folks watching right now. You might say, Pastor Begley, this is an incredible story. But you know, when you come to Jesus Christ, you actually experience this new birth, this resurrection power of Christ. Matter of fact, the Bible said the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead shall quicken your mortal bodies, okay? There's a quickening, there's a birth, there's a, there's a breakthrough supernaturally done through the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So here's what took place. Christ began to uh, say these words and the dead man got up. He began to walk toward the mouth of the cave, wrapped in grave clothes, bound. And as you're coming to Jesus Christ, you can know this. The clutches of sin and death will try to hang on to you. Satan doesn't let go easily. And uh, you may find yourself still being tempted of some of the things that used to uh, take you away from God and, and the things that had you bound in life. And you may find yourself struggling with that, much like Lazarus was struggling with the grave clothes as he was coming from the dead. But Christ will not leave you. And, you know, this is why I love this promise. Jesus said, uh, look, I won't leave you. I won't forsake you. I'm going to be with you all the way, even to the end of the world. And so Lazarus came forth. The grave clothes came off, and the dead man rose from the dead. You can imagine what was going on in, around that, uh, in the cemetery, around the tomb, when this took place. Well, now as you look at the end times, uh, let's take a look what the Bible promises. The coming of the Lord. The coming of the Lord. Here's what it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So listen to this, the second coming, the coming of the Lord is not going to stop, uh, you know, he's coming for his bride, okay? So it, that's not going to prevent those that are in the grave that have already died in Christ the, for the Bible tells you, for the Lord himself, verse 16, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So can you imagine being here when the Son of the living God coming in the power and great glory and the graves begin to burst open and the saints of God begin to come out in glorified bodies. Just like Lazarus came out of the tomb, they're going to come out of the grave. And there's going to be an incredible moment. I, 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 I can't even comprehend it really. I mean, it's really hard to even fathom the magnificent power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ 
how the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then he says to us, then we, verse 17, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I mean, are you serious? Are you serious? There can't be a more unbelievable reunion, a magnificent crescendo of, of the glorious, majestic power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So you think those people were getting excited down there by the cave of Lazarus, mortals watching an immortality, watching a change uh, from death into life. Imagine when the entire dead in Christ, <laughs> uh, look, the coming of the Lord, the coming of the Lord. I'm going to keep preaching the coming of the Lord because he's coming back and he, he's coming back after those that are ready. So you've been studying biblical prophecy. You've been running the timelines. You've been studying different things. A lot of you faithful uh, partners of our ministry, many of you uh, follow us online. You can watch us every day online, of course. I'm on at 12 noon Eastern live every day. Go to my website at paulbegleyprophecy.com or, or some of the other live streamings at YouTube or what have you. We can keep up with the current world events. We can watch the things that are happening on a day-to-day -day basis, which we do. But we always refer back to the biblical scriptures, the truth, the understanding of some of the events that are taking place are actually putting the pieces of the puzzle together to the coming of the Lord. I have a, a, a right now I have a, a DVD out called Rapture Ready. And I honestly think if you get your hands on that, you can start to understand the power of the coming of the Lord. And it's also great for someone to watch that isn't saved because it really helps them understand what it means to be rapture ready, okay, and to be prepared. But as we go forward, we're going to see more apocalyptic events, more signs in the heavens as well as on the earth, and we're going to see uh, tremendous events, volcanoes erupting everywhere, you know, all kinds of asteroids whizzing by the earth. There's an increase in earthquakes. These are all apocalyptic signs. But what about the signs of the saints of God being prepared for the Lord? Look what it says here. He says, look, we're going to be, he said in verse 18, wherefore comfort one another with these words. Now, the next chapter, stay with me. First Thessalonians chapter five. But of the times and of the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. In other words, you're unaware. We don't know. Jesus said, no man knows the day nor the hour. No, not the angels in heaven, not the Son of God, but the Father only. But he told us, Jesus said in Matthew 24, but watch and pray. For in an hour you think not the Son of Man cometh. Check this out. Verse 2 again. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. And when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with a child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that the day should overtake you as a thief. You're in the light. You will not be caught unaware if you are ready to meet the Lord, the coming of the Lord. And uh, so look, you say, Pastor, what do I got to do that? Well, obviously, you got to start looking at your life, take an inventory of it, understanding where you stand with God. And so people ask me all the time, how much time do you think we got left? It's the number one question. Pastor, how, where do you think we are in Bible prophecy? Um, how much time do you think we have left? People ask that more than what do I do to be saved? See, what people are doing, they're trying to figure out how they can work it out in the end. It's very important to understand that you have no promise of tomorrow, okay? Today is the day of salvation. And I'm trying everything. Look, it's unbelievable the amount of people who truly, truly, in their heart, want to do the right thing. People who truly want to get things right with God and get things ready. I don't want you to miss it. The coming of the Lord is near. I'll be right back in a moment.
I want to thank all my partners for standing with me, for helping us in the mission of leading people to Jesus Christ, for winning souls into the kingdom. Our live broadcast online, we're seeing 25, 30 souls every day accepting Christ as their Savior. And right here on this television broadcast, so many have come to Jesus Christ. We couldn't do it without you, but we can do all things with Christ. So thank you again for being our partners. God bless all of you. All right, all right. You know what, folks? The coming of the Lord. The coming of the Lord. Are you serious? The coming of the Lord. And so I think sometimes we push that out and figure that's way out there somewhere. But as we've been explaining to you in the scriptures and we look at the current events going on, we're getting ever so close. Matter of fact, look what uh, the Apostle Paul wrote. Same chapter, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Look at verse 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, he says, he goes on to say, who died for us, that with whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Whether you die in the Lord before he comes, or if you happen to be here alive when he comes to grab the body of Christ, to rapture us into heaven. Either way, whether you're alive or you're sleeping, we're all going to go together with the Lord. That's if we're saved. Now, the wrath of God is going to be poured out upon the rest of the earth. And I can tell you, you don't want to be here. You don't want to be left behind. You don't want to be here when the wrath of God is poured out. Uh, the earth will moan and groan, the tribes of the earth, where there'll be weeping, there'll be crying, there will be men will cry for the rocks and the mountains to hide them from the face of him that sits on the throne. Are you saved or would you like to be saved? I'd love to pray with you right now. Just ask Jesus into your heart. Just open up your life and say, Father, I know I'm a sinner. I know I've sinned. and I realize I've come short of your glory and I, I'm repenting of my sins and confessing my sins to you, Lord. I'm asking for forgiveness to let Jesus just to come into my heart, to wash away the, the sin and the shame, all of the pain that the world has given me. And I'm calling upon the name of Jesus. And I'm asking for salvation, Lord. I'm believing upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm believing he's the Son of God and that he's coming back. The Lord is coming, and I want to be ready. So right here, right now, by faith in Jesus' name, I'm saved. I am saved. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, welcome to the family of God. This is, look, look, trust me. Let's get started a new way. Get on the strong path. Find a local church somewhere, or you can come to my daily broadcast every day at 12 noon Eastern at my website. And just look, fellowship with others. But I want you to know Jesus loves you. Get baptized, find a place to go. I want to see you in heaven. Let's meet each other in the air.